fellow comic enthusiasts, welcome back to HC Comics, your gateway to the colorful and captivating world of comics. Today, we're embarking on the next exciting chapter of this comic series together, wishing you all some relaxing moments as we dive in to HC Comics Adventure, returning to the main developments of the story. In this episode, we start with the scene. We are back with another episode of The Remarried Empress, episode 147. Right off bat, this episode contains a warning. The following episode contains content that may be shocking for some readers. Viewer discretion is advised. And that's going to come towards the end as a little bit of warning, y'all. And it does involve trash bag, a.k.a. Rashta. But we are in the Western Empire right now where Navier is handling business. Okay, so she's negotiating things with Duke Kaufman because as we all know, Navier don't let personal ish stand in the way of business, okay? She's gonna do what she gotta do to benefit the people. So anyway, she's finished with the conversation and she's like, is there anything else you wanted to discuss with me? And Duke Kaufman, he hesitates. And he's like, ah, I don't know if I should, but whatever, I owe her this much. Marquise Cantred, is the mastermind behind recent events, and Duke Rivety is turning a blind eye. And Davia's like, what? What recent event? Like, what do he know? She's like, what do you mean? And then she's like, oh, is he saying what I think he is? Yes, girl, he's talking about the whole ghost situation, okay? We've been out here ghost busting, out here searching for some ghosts that these grown adults uh, who don't have nothing better to do with themselves. These two, because they crystal love supporters. I'm like, don't y'all got kids to be helping your wife race? Don't you got business to be running? Huh? Instead, y'all over here pretending there's a ghost haunting the castle. Like, y'all, that's not even childish. That's just pathetic. But Henry was like, yeah, I can see him doing it. I can see him doing it because Marquise... Catron, he can cast illusions. Ooh. Look, for the longest, you guys, when I was reading The Remarried Empress, I always thought it was like, huh, they got mages, but I never seen or heard of anybody, like, using their powers. I heard them, no using stones, or we see, you know, Henry transform, but, like, other than that, I didn't really think nobody had real powers. Like, there wasn't much thought put into it. But hearing that there are people who can cast illusions, it's like, oh, okay. There is a lot more to it when they say they got mages and they got magic in this series. So I was like, that's really cool. Navy is like, huh, I'm surprised. One wouldn't expect the foreign minister to be a mage. But I suppose it's not unusual for an outstanding mage to be given a role that is unrelated to magic. Just look at Henry and Grand Duke Kaufman. Kaufman and Henry are exemplary students at the Will War Academy of Magic. Oh. Okay, see, I always keep forgetting that little tidbit that they have magic out there because nobody really uses it. We are so heavily focused on trash bag drama and Navy as romance that we barely see magic being used in this series. And of course, Navy being a bad that she's just like, I'm going to handle this. And Henry's like, of course, but what are you going to do? And then he's like, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Like, they effed up with the wrong one. Like, Navier is the type, okay, look, look, look. Navier is the type, and she goes to a restaurant with Henry, and Henry orders the cheeseburger, and they bring him back a chicken sandwich, and Henry would be like, oh, I'm just going to eat it. She could be like, you didn't order this. I'm going to go and get you the cheeseburger that you ordered. He's going to be like, no, it's okay, babe. I'll eat it. She's like... Where's the chef? My man ordered a cheeseburger. You're going to make him a cheeseburger. And better yet, since you got it wrong the first time, go ahead and upgrade that to a double cheeseburger. <laughs> Unlike other people who are ruling, you know, empires and stuff like that, Navy is going to do it in a very classy way. She's like, I should fight rumors with rumors instead of pulling people's tongues out. You know what I'm just saying? <laughs> But here's the Marquise. He's out and about doing what he's been doing. Okay. Casting illusions. And out of nowhere, these people jump from behind. And he's like, oh, what's going on here? Wait for them to knock him out. Who is this person? 
Oh, I know him. That's Nia. You know the lady from the Eastern Empire that Rasha got her kicked out the empire. Wow, that's her boo. That's her man. Okay. They came through for Navy. You're talking about that should keep them quiet for a week. And just like Navy predicted, people are talking. They're like, did you hear that Marquise Cantrid received medical attention after a brutal late night beating? Oh, he hasn't waken up for several days and it's just groaning. Oh dear, but don't you find it odd? Their ghost hasn't been back ever since Marquis Controlled has been bedridden. They're like, oh, what are you implying? <laughs> I must get going, but you three, enjoy yourself. So Rose started the rumor. I'm like, hey, let's get it. Let's get it going. It is quite strange. The Marquis also happens to specialize in illusory magic. Oh my. Do you think he did it because Lady Crystal was driven out of the palace? I mean, I understand why he's angry, but he crossed the line by involving the late king. Like, wow. There's a clear difference between false rumors and exposing our truth. Oh, yeah, and that's what we call checkmate. Yeah. But meanwhile, in the Eastern Empire, after Rashta returns from her trip, <sighs> Yeah, brace yourself. Okay, what we're about to see, what she did. Rashta has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. None. It's gone. Like, nothing. Not even her upbringing, her environment. I used to try to give her a little bit of grace. Like, okay, maybe it's not her father. But after what she just did in this episode, you guys, shh, nothing. She's like, I'm glad the assassin did a great job. But I didn't expect the shock to last this long. Yeah, she's glad the assassin did a great job. That's what she's glad about, that he did a great job. No guilt, no remorse over what she did. Okay? Talk about, but I didn't expect the shock to last this long. What was the shock? Y'all ready for this? Brace yourself for those of you guys who are, you know, a little bit against blood and stuff like that. This is not the scene for you. It is ahead. Yep. The head of the men who helped Rashta escape slavery. This man, he's the reason why she's able to sit where she's sitting right now as Sylvia Shit's empress. That's the only reason is because of those eyes right here. If he did not help her escape, Sylvia Shit would have never found her and we would never be in this predicament from the get-go, okay? And she did that to that man. Absolutely not even an ounce of loyalty. Like, girl, you could have just gave him like a little bit of jewelry, something, and sent him out of town. But instead, you used the assassin that he got for you to murder him. And I'm betting everything I own love. He did not see that coming. Because he was like true to Rashta. He thought Rashta was a good person. This is what happened when you believe in the wrong one. And now she's with Viscount Lotus Shoot and she's getting a new assassin. Talk about, I brought you a skilled assassin just like you wanted. Girl, what is she doing collecting assassins? Like, what? Th this is an assassin creed, Rashta. Why are you collecting them? I did ask the Viscount to find me one just in case, but I don't really need one anymore. Why are these assassins so set on covering their faces? I'm like, why are you so set on collecting assassins and bad people? Or maybe it's because you are a bad person. Mm -hmm. That's why she decided to hire him. Talking about, let's see how good you are. And now she's with Duke Ergie. Do you really love using me for your own purposes, don't you? No, no that's not it. It's just that... You're the person I trust the most. And yet, you want to get me involved in something so dangerous. Don't tell me she's sending an assassin after Duke Ergie and she came to warn him, but she didn't do that for the other person who actually helped her escape slavery. Trash bag, you truly are the trashiest villain in all of Webtoon. Like, wow. 
She's like, the assassin won't hurt you. I, I made them promise they wouldn't. I don't understand. I thought he was smiling and agreed to it like he always does. You don't understand why somebody wouldn't want you to jeopardize, wouldn't want you to play games with their life. Uh, you don't understand why somebody who, even though he is using you, but you think of him as a friend, is feeling some type of way about you using him as a quote-unquote test that put his life in danger. She is probably the slowest of the slowest. So I, I, I just instructed them to bring me that bracelet. That's all. That's all, Duke Ergay. He doesn't even want me to, want to look at me. But it's too late to kiss on the test. What should I do? I, I didn't mean to shock you. I'll see you later. I'm sure he'll get over it once everything goes well. Did she even say sorry? Huh? Did she even say sorry? No, she didn't. I'll apologize to him again. What you're doing right now is not an apology. But Duke Ergy, of course, he's playing her like a little tiny violin. So he's like, yeah, it's going to work out to my advantage. That little smirk on his face is saying that she is moving exactly how he wants her to move. So low key, I don't feel bad for him. I still just think Rasha is like completely trash because even though Duke Ergie is playing her, she don't know that. And it's like, if he's supposed to be your friend, you don't do that to somebody. And he's like, let the corruption begin. Da, da, da. Wowzers. And later on at dawn, she's screaming, you surely you're not serious. I made it clear that you weren't to harm him. Oh, that's the bracelet. There's blood. Oh, what happened? And the assassin, he's like, the duke and his guards were too powerful. I couldn't steal it without using force. And she flinched like, what did you think would happen, Rashta? Of course, it's not going to be that easy. There's no doubt they're very skilled seeing as they still manage to take it. But what about the Duke? Huh? Really now you're concerned about his well-being. <laughs> and on some morning she just stood out there just staring out the window. She's dazed until somebody comes in and they're like, Um, your majesty, Duke Ergy is preparing to leave the palace. And she's like, what? What did you just say? If he leaves, then I... No. I can't let him depart. <laughs> and she's running and crying like, Please, don't leave, Duke Ergy. I have... I have... I have to tell you something. <laughs> don't tell me you're going to tell him the baby is his. <laughs> Look, I would not be surprised if that's what she said. She's like, the baby is yours. <laughs> Oh my, oh my, but I cannot believe she's running out there like that over him. <sighs> I feel like this is all part of Duke Ergie's plan though. I don't know why, but something is telling me that this was all set up by him from the get-go. And she just played right into his head. Let's get to it, episode 148. Rosh just like, your wrist, he must have entered it. When the assassin snatched the bracelets. <laughs> oh, oh. But Duke Ergen, he's like, you know what? If he just trying to stop me, then I will bid you goodbye. That's when Rasha's like, I have feelings for you. He's like, what? Say what? Like, huh? I know I was playing you like a little tiny violin, but you got what for me now? She's like, I didn't realize how I felt until I heard you were leaving. <laughs> Not only do you have my trust, you also have my affection. No, it's stronger than that. I love you. So please, don't leave me. And she is saying all of this loudly, okay? She's not being shy about it. Rashta is screaming it out. Everybody is hearing her. They are like, what the fudge? 
Like, girl, you got a whole husband in your empress and you over here crying and begging somebody to be with you. Mm. And of course, Duke Ergen knows how to spin it to benefit himself. So he's like, <laughs> yeah, right. You only think you love me because you're going through a rough patch in your marriage. Or perhaps it's Audrey and pretense. And she's like, no, <laughs> you're wrong. Even the mere thought of you leaving me fills me with agony. Please, please be my lover. Girl, did she really look? I need a pause for a minute. I need a pause. Everything from an empress. Okay, even if the empress is Rashta, but still, baby, you have the second, second greatest title in the country. You're the empress. And you begging somebody to be your lover. All the way down to Duke Ergie's reaction to all of this. He's like, I didn't see that coming, but it could work in my favor. You sly dog, you. Okay, Duke Ergie, look. I know I don't like Rostra, but my dude, you were playing chess with somebody who don't even know the rules for check. Okay, I don't even know if this is really much of a win for Duke Ergie because it's like... She never stood a chance. She never stood a chance. And he's over here like, oh dear. The truth is, I also feel the same way. So what you're asking for isn't difficult. However, there's just one problem. I'm a foreign royalty. It would be demeaning if I become the lover of someone who's an empress in name only. I'll be more than just a mere figurehead. I promise you that it's not something that you can just decide on your own. She said, I, 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 I'm willing to do anything for you. And look, look at his smirk. Oh, Rashta, girl, can't you see you being played? However, I might be persuaded. She's like, what can I do? What can I give you? If you give me a gift that will help me save face when I become your lover, what would you like? Money? Jewels? I have more money and jewels than you can shake a stick at. D then what do you want? Ah, oh, I got it. I'd like some land that's by the sea. B by the sea? Y you want a port? I might be near the sea. Since I'm from a maritime kingdom, but but I don't have the power. If you can't do that, then I'd be more prudent for us to part ways. I, I'll find a way. I will. I make it happen. Oh, she is going cuckoo for cocoa pals for this man. Baby girl, that's send a cute look on you. Oh no, empresses don't move like that. Mm -mm. Somebody should have schooled her like, girl, you is showing just how weak you are to him. Rashta, girl, this, this isn't it at all. I don't like this for you. Now you just begging him to play you like a little tiny violin. Just toot, 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 toot. He basically like, hey, play me. A few days later, word got to Sylvia Shu. Somebody's like, much has been said about Her Majesty asking to argue to stay. To entire rough, how many could be subject to ridicule if we don't step in? And he's like, well, psh, who cares? People has been mocking us ever since she wore that wedding dress that looked like a single seaweed. I knew that being in the palace would change her, but I'd hope she'd return, retain some of her innocence. Oh, that's what you get over your shoe when you play dumb games without reading the rules, huh? You really thought that she was going to stay young, dumb, and innocent forever? Mm -hmm. I guess the more innocent you are, the quicker you'll be led astray. If you think that way, why didn't you better prepare her before you put her in this position? Huh? Huh? I'm just saying. Okay, because accountability is not something that, you know, you're familiar with, uh, of course. <sighs> Just leave her be for now. 
The baby's more important. Of course. So if your shoes like, well, was there anything else? Cause uh, I'm tired of this. I'm ready to go to sleep. Come on now. And he's like, oh, well, this isn't related to the Eastern Empire, but it must be about the Western Empire. Given his hesitation. Boy, don't tell me he's keeping tabs on the Western Empire. Sir, you still press on Navy who don't want you? It's fine. Go ahead. Um, there's a scandal involving the former Queen Krista and Emperor Henry. What? What did you just say? Really? Really, Soviet shoe? You really getting mad because you hear some rumors that Henry may have been entangled in some drama with Krista. Uh, you actually played her with, what's her face? Trash bag? Okay. But now, of course, you know, Sylvia Shu is like the king, the emperor of delusional. He's like, Navia must have been heartbroken on the inside. Caught Everly here. Why do you want Everly to come here? <laughs> well, let's find out. He want Everly to come here because he's sending her to the Western Empire to give Navier a gift. And he don't want Navier to know that the gift is from him. So he's like, say it's from you. And she's like, oh, okay. So that's why he suddenly called for me out the blue. With that, Everly is off to pack. She's heading to the Western Kingdom. And when she get there, baby, we are not going back. You hear me, Everly? Girl, we are running away from the ghetto of the Eastern Empire. We are not going back, okay? Don't tell Sophia shit, <laughs> but we ain't coming back. And meanwhile, in the Western Empire, we have Navier and her boo and her husband taking a walk in the rain. This is so cute. Yeah, taking a walk and enjoying the weather. And Henry's talking about a gift. And Navier's like, ah, he's going to ask for something indecent again. What is he, like, what he's been asking for, Navier? What kind of indecent stuff has this face been asking you for, huh? Like, I'm curious. I want to bathe with you for my birthday. Oh, oh. Sir, Henry, you naughty, naughty bird. Davia is like, I knew it. Girl, you know your husband so well because I was not expecting that. And she's like, ah, I think about it. But you know, the way she said, huh, I think about it, you can tell in her face that she's looking forward to it. <laughs> because all of a sudden, she starts thinking about that night when she saw him transform from his bird into his human form. And he was in a bird bath. Yeah, I remember. I remember. So I'm like, you look great when you were soaking wet. Yes, yes, Xavier. Your husband do look great soaking wet. And let me tell you, Henry was not expecting her to say that. Because look at his eyeball. He's like, what? What? Did you really just say that? Because, oh, um, baby, say less. I can tell you in the room right now. If that's all I got to do, I'll stay soaking wet for you all day, all night. And just when I thought the night was over, okay, just when I thought we were done, and then on a good note, we are at Duke Riverdy's estate. Why? I don't know. Okay, but anyways, he received a letter from Krista. Krista, girl, why are you not unalive? Why are you not six feet under by now? Because you won't be here sending letters. Huh? Like, why? Tell me about this is a letter from Lady Krista. That explains the ultimate cause of Empress Navia's divorce. Send someone to Empress Washington. To check if this is true. Really? They are really going to bring Rasta back into this mess. Oh my God. Like, I'm ready for these two to disappear. Okay? Y'all need to go away. Y'all need to just be sh down the drain. Because life was good. We do not need to bring the trash bag drama to the Western Empire. I thought I escaped this late. Like, everywhere I go, y'all always want to bring this trash. Like, Why? Like all a girl want to do is watch Napier and Henry be cute and flirt together. Uh, that's all I want to do. <laughs> that is it. I don't care for trash bag. I just want to see them be cute. <laughs> is that too much to ask? Uh, is that too much to ask these people? 
Napier don't do nothing but mind her business and keep her husband happy and take care of her people, okay? And when I say her people, I mean whatever country she's ruling over, those citizens become her people and she takes good care of them. And here come these two idiots trying to ruin it for us. Brace yourself, ladies and gentlemen. More drama is coming our way because whatever trash bag name is, you can guarantee drama is coming. Hey guys, so we are back with another episode of The Remarried Empress, episode 149. So let's see what's going on. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button to show your girl some love. Okay, so it looks like the troops came. Lord Kassar is back, you guys. People are in the streets talking about Tabai. Yes, I saw him go that way earlier. Thank you. That's all. You finna go look for your future boo. <laughs> Tabai, where did he go? Thank you. Please come again. Huh? A boutique? I'll go take a look inside. And on her way to look inside the boutique, Lord behold, it is none other than Kosar beating somebody down. Kosar! They probably were thieves. It looked like they were trying to rob somebody because I see gifts on the ground. Or maybe they were trying to rob Kosar himself. He was purchasing gifts for Navy. And knowing him, that's probably what it is. Lord Kosar? Hmm? What's Navy's lady in waiting doing here? She's like, ah. um, he's like, hello. I didn't expect to run into you here. Yes. What? And she went straight to it. Master don't play no game. And she's like, baby, I'm here to spar. Like, let's go. She's like, I've been waiting for this. You're as good as they say. I wanted to spar with you for a while. And Kosar's like, okay. <laughs> it's not fitting for me to spar with my sister's lady in waiting. I don't think she'll back down easily. However, if you promise not to tell her about what you saw, I'll agree to a duel. And Mass said, say less, deal, let's go. My girl don't play. Look at Mass for go. Look, this is giving pride and prejudice, you guys. Anybody else read the book inside a movie? If y'all did, then you probably understand what's going on here. <laughs> She's fast. She, yeah, she is fast. I had her pegged as Navier's young lady who spars for fun. But I was wrong. Ooh. She is not here to play at all. Okay. She knows what she's doing. And is she winning? I could risk injuring her if I don't hold back. Perhaps I should knock her out. Or I should find the right moment to bow out. Boy, why are you over here contemplating? She pop. I bet she just knock him out. Lord Kassar? Wow. I think Master might be the first person... To knock Kosar out. And for all we know, she probably could knock some sense into him too while we add it. <laughs> so my Lord Kosar. <laughs> this episode has started off on the right foot. I am loving this for Kosar and loving this even more for Master. And the Eastern Empire is not the only one keeping up with what's going on on the other side. Henry and McKin, I forgot his cousin name, okay? But the cousin... They are talking about Sophia Shu. Tell about it appears Empress Sophia Shu has a new mistress. Really? So soon after going through all that trouble to get rid of Navier? Who's the new woman? Well, the spy says it's Everly. And Henry's like, what? But she's so young. Yeah, she is. Wait, this could be a problem. If they connect Everly's troubles with the declined number of mages, they may very well deduce the truth. And if Navier finds out about that, oh, because he knows Navier loves Everly. Yeah, I just realized Everly was so young when we first introduced her. It hasn't been that long since we first met her. Navier's divorce, and now a rumor going around that she's Sylvia Shit's mistress. Oh no, that young girl don't need that. She do not need. People tighten her image, attaching her to that bag of shit. She's not going to let us slide. Mm -mm -mm. 
but not wanting to make Navier mad when she finds out the truth because y'all know she is going to find it, okay? She is a detective. If anybody's on the case, best believe it's Navier. <laughs> and so Henry's like, I'm thinking of making your brother the first golden knight. You are a golden knight? What's a golden knight? Henry created that title to get to those who are particularly courageous and loyal. Okay, that seems to fit Kosai. Though it is but an honorary title, it's only awarded to two individuals per year. It'd be an honor for my brother to become the first golden knight in history. But wouldn't some people disapprove? Girl, your brother just fought off those bandits. Those haters need to sit there behind that because what Kosar did in like two and a half weeks, they couldn't do in like six months. Okay? Hmm. Lord Kosar is greeted with grand feasts wherever he, his troop goes. Anyone who objects is bound to raise eyebrows. So don't worry. Maybe it's like, okay, well, that's good to hear. And... Grand Duke Kaufman sent this liquor as an apology gift. Let's drink this to celebrate. Oh, we drinking. Oh, we drinking. Oh, we drinking. What are we drinking? Moscato. <laughs> we drinking some wine. He said it's so rare and valuable that it's usually out of reach for anyone except the royalty there. Ooh, champagne. How pretty. It reminds me of the desert. It's sweet and smooth. Okay, Henry. They are enjoying love. Y'all know what happens when you get a little bit of love in your body. If this was Hennessy that they were drinking, somebody, aka Navia, would have definitely walked for pregnant because Hennessy don't play. <laughs> oh, but this wine is also doing the job. Look at though. They had love it too much to drink. Tell me, ah, I fell asleep. Wait a minute, Navia, why do you have feathers in your hand, baby girl? How many glasses did I drink? What's this? Girl, don't tell me that he transformed into a bird in the middle of y'all getting busy. What were y'all doing? What were y'all doing, Navia? Why is your husband slumped on the ground like this? How much did he drink? Talk about Henry? Girl, Henry had one too many drinks. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the Eastern Empire, uh, that place don't make me happy at all, you guys. Why we gotta go here? So this is the journalist. And he's like, I know his majesty told me he'll look into it himself. But it's already been days, and I haven't heard anything from him. I just had to take matters into my own head. There she is. Irony. You again. You just don't quit. I told you, I don't know anything about your sister. I know, but I met my wit's end. If you could give me anything at all, no matter how trivial it is, and even these, like, people aren't always what they seem. And he's like, what? Be suspicious of the person you trust the most. That's all I can tell you. And the shoe runs off. And he's like, the person I trust the most. Who is the person you trust the most, Mr. Journalist? Don't tell me it's trash bag, because baby, you don't even know her like that. And you already trust her. <laughs> You're about to end up like the one other person who trusted her with his life, and now he don't have one. I'm just saying. Talking about, I did what you asked me to do. Your Majesty. <gasps> Sophia Shu is setting the journalist to go after trash bag. Sophia Shu, you know what your wife did. You know your wife murdered that man's sister. And you gonna give that journalist the major clue. You could say he don't like his wife. If you don't like your wife, just go ahead and say you don't like her. Okay? You don't like it at all. So now by keep this up and you'll be sparred from punishment. The Remarried Empress, episode 150. So a few days after Rostra stopped Duke Ergie from leaving, 
everybody in the town is talking about her in the capital. Like, what's going on? So they're talking about the maid that threw a chair at Rashta. And they said she did this after the empress had hired her when no one else would because her father's a criminal. Talk about ungrateful. But they're just not talking about what the maid did. They're also talking about Rashta herself. Talking about, well, I wouldn't lay all the blame on the maid. Look at this. There is an article about Rashta floating around. Even when she was stressed a mistress, Empress Rashta has a history of punishing and dismissing her maids for various reasons, including for giving her abortion drugs, for deceiving her, and for violent behavior. Now, I may not like Rashta because she's done some ridiculous things, but come on now. Abortion drugs, deceiving her, and for violent behavior, those are all valid reasons for you to dismiss somebody from working for you. I'm just saying. This is in stark contrast to Empress Napier, who only had two people quit. One left after getting married and the other returned after giving birth. So they're over here comparing Rashta to Napier, which for Rashta isn't a good look because Napier was that empress, okay? She was that empress. Why do these issues only arise with Empress Rashta? It's illogical to blame it on the fact that she spent many of her years as a commoner because the maids are also commoners. Oop. I knew that journalist was coming for her throat, Rashta, we told you. If her origin were the issue, then it'll make more sense for her to be in a conflict with her ladies-in-waiting. That raises concerns about Empress Rashta's character. In that line alone, that little line just opened up, okay, a can of worms to people who are now going to scrutinize, analyze, break down everything that has to do with Trash Bag's character. Like, at this point, the dominoes are rolling real quick, real quick. Look, at she's mad. She's big mad. We call her super mad. Ooh, she's trembling, y'all. Uh-uh-uh. Oh, do you think this journalist wrote this awful article because he blames me for his sister's disappearance? Bam, you are the cause of his sister's disappearance. Actually, you're the cause of why his sister is never going to come back for her, her disappearance. You are literally the reason why that innocent girl is lying someplace six feet under an unmarked grave, okay? That's the most disrespectful thing out of all of it. You're going to murder somebody innocent and then put them in an unmarked grave? Wow. And Sylvia Shu, who is basically setting her up for like public scrutiny, is like, well, who, who's who saying, you know? She's like, I'm scared that people are going to get the wrong idea about me. Please stop it from writing more articles like this, your majesty. And Sylvia, she was like, well, I would, but we'll be making a mountain out of a molehill. Just, just let it be, okay? Just, uh. And then he turns to leave. He's like, bye. She's like, your majesty? Your majesty? And Sylvia, she was just left the room talking about, yeah, the rumors are going to die down. It's not like they have any evidence. Until he starts giving them evidence. <laughs> Look, even his advisor is like, your majesty, are you really going to let this go unaddressed? Her majesty's reputation is at risk. And he's like, yeah, it's fine. Our main concern should be the baby's well-being. Not trivial matters like this. If you cared about the baby's well-being, you would not be setting Rashta up. Like, don't get me wrong, you guys, okay? I'm not T. Rashta whatsoever, but I do feel like, sir, you married her. You made her your wife, okay? Take accountability. Don't just throw her out to the wolves while she's pregnant with your quote-unquote child, okay? I'm just like, you don't do that, Okay, you said to death do you part, so you're going to stick with her until the end. All right, then? I just don't like how he's basically throwing her under the bus when he made the choice to marry her. Nobody forced you, Sylvia Shu. Nobody. Okay? And pregnant indeed, Rashta is. Oh, my. Oh, my. Look at that. How many months are you? Look, like I said, I may not like Rashta, 
but a pregnant belly like oh my goodness look at you hi baby hi hi kitty five who's in there oh my belly has gotten so big that's a lot that has happened okay normally people are pregnant for about nine months 40 weeks that is a lot and i don't even think rashta was at the palace for that long before she announced she was pregnant I, if i'm correct she was there for about two weeks so within 40 weeks i'm gonna go ahead and say 40 weeks all of this has happened over here she divorced his wife okay they've here got remarried the same day and he married rashta like wow all of this within 40 weeks like girl this is a lot <laughs> it's a lot and Rasha's talking to the baby. Darling child, you must be getting ready to be born. This baby has to be a son in order to inherit the throne. Your Majesty, um, um, a gentleman asked me to give you this. A gentleman. And so she's reading the letter. And she gets one of her little evil smirks. What is the letter about? It must be about Navier because she flashbacks to Navier. Of course, you'll be preoccupied with your own issues with such as your infertility. Oh, wow. So we're going back to that, Rashta. Don't tell me that letter is like some ish which they are confirming that Navier is indeed infertile. Don't tell me that's what's going on. Well, whatever that letter said, Rashta is over here plotting. Um, like the duck duck she is because like girl you are just mad about the newspaper coming after your character but you have absolutely no problem Napier is way out there in her empire where her husband getting drunk and having herself a good night you about to have a baby coming any day now and you press over Napier like girl if you are obsessed just say that why are you so obsessed with me no 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 because you are giving that stalker much but meanwhile in the western empire we got ourselves a drunk husbandy what a troublesome drunk he is but Ken is like yeah well he's always like this whenever he turns into a bird and drinks just let him sleep it off and he'll wake up eventually but Kana said it wasn't a big deal but I was shocked when I discovered him like this. Girl, this is how you make yourself so birdie babies. <laughs> I don't even want to imagine that because that's low key. Like, uh, let's not get into it. A bird in a first sitting in that kind of position. You know what? Let me mind my business. I can't let this happen. He is sleeping real good too. What should I do, Henry? There are too many things that you are hiding. So I'll be in over my head if I fall for you. You're so harsh. Henry? Oh, girl, I, what happened? We was just in the room, cozying. And now we got this. What's going on here, sweetheart? How? What happened between? Did we really just sit there and wait for him to wake up and then he transformed back into, you know, his human self? He's like, did it really bother you that much to see me drunk and passed out? What do you mean? I must have dozed off. How long was I asleep? You've been avoiding me since then. That's not true. We dine together and we see each other in the evening. You've been keeping busy by completing tasks ahead of schedule. That feels like you're avoiding me. <gasps> Are you avoiding him, Napier? But it's not because you got drunk, Henry. It's because Napier is still going through her feelings. She's in love with you, but she don't know how to admit it just yet because she's afraid. Because admitting that she's in love means that she'll be letting down her guard and opening herself to being hurt by you. Yeah. I kept my distance because I didn't want to cross any line. But I didn't consider that this might hurt his feelings. Should I have been more direct about how I feel? But how do I do that? Do I tell him I think I love you? But I don't want to fall too deeply in love with you. Oh, Navy, that's exactly what you need to say. Those exact words right there. Just say it. Say it. I love you. It's been so long that I lost without you. What am I gonna do? Girl, kiss your man. <laughs> She's like, you are truly beautiful, Henry. 
He was like, is that all I am to you? Just a pretty face? My queen. Navier. Oh, Navier. Navier, grope? Oh, I mean, y'all married, so go on ahead and do what married folks do. But Henry joked his leg. <gasps> my queen, are you only interested in my body? Navier's like, what? Say, 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 what now? Huh? Your body? Like, wait, no. <laughs> what? Only interested in his body? If that were the case, I wouldn't have spent so much time agonizing over this. <laughs> Those two. He has touched me many, many times. Does he think that was showing affection while I'm doing it for perverted reasons? She's annoyed. She's like, how dare you? Like, you be all over me trying to take baths with me. But when I want to grip a little bit of chest, okay, you want to jump like I'm a pervert? Like, sir, I am your wife, okay? <laughs> but even when you are married, consent is the utmost important. Okay, even with married couples. But um, here come one of our lady in waiting. She's like, Grand Duke Kaufman is here to see you. He says there's a problem with the merchant group. A problem? What's going on? Soon as Napier says, send him in, he bursts through the door like you had your ears pressed to the door. Sir, tell about why is he in such a hurry? Your Majesty, one of the merchant groups that was trying to set sail as a trial run was captured at port. The remarried empress. Let's get to it. So we there with everybody handling the situation that Duke Kaufman read through Navia's room about in the last episode. So I'm glad everything is getting handled because this deal is very important to Navia. And this is episode 151. So after the emergency meeting, Navia's thinking, can we really trust Marquis Cantra? He's likely harboring a grudge after what happened to Krista. And Henry, he could read her face. Like, he could tell his dad was going through her mind. He's like, don't worry. He's not a fool. He held on to his position because he's good at his job. And Navier's like, oh, well, I suppose Henry knows him better than I do. So you know what? Let's take his word. As soon as that thought entered Navier's head, that thought left and in camp. Are you interested in my body only? Navia has a flashback to the last conversation she had with Henry about his body. And she's like, come to think about it. I haven't said anything to him since then. And then she's like, hmm. Henry's so confused. He's like, my queen, you're leaving without me. And she's like, well, we're not off duty yet, are we? Are you hanging with me? And Navier is doing my favorite move, my favorite passive aggressive move. When you are really angry at somebody, but you keep telling them no, that you're not until finally you snap and then you just release all of your frustration on them. Yeah, Navier, that is called ineffective communication. I've been learning a lot this year. <laughs> and she's like, no, why would I be angry over such nonsense? So he's like, so you are angry. And he's like, hmm. And in order to maintain the peace, Henry is like, I'm sorry, my queen. I regret my earlier outbursts. I thought we were growing closer. But had I known it would upset you this much, I'm really sorry. Oh, well, that's not good. He should be able to express himself with his wife. I hope Navy nip this in the bud and reassures him that, yo, I got your back. I'm the one keeping this distance between us. But why is it always Henry who has to walk on eggshells around me? I promise him a happy family. You did, baby girl. You're going to deliver on it? But have I left them feeling lonely? Because I was scared to fall in love with them. If I reject his heart and only accept his body. Well, that's the line right there. If I reject his heart and only accept his body, what does that make you? Girl, that makes you a city girl. <laughs> Ah, city girls up a hundred points this year because Napier's ending the year as a city girl, okay? She's just using Henry for his body. She don't care about the love. <laughs> I'm just trolling my girl. And right when she's about to like pour out her heart, this kid, dad, sir, kid, who are you calling dad? There better be a dad behind Henry. <laughs> Did he say dad? 
Yes, did he say that? Can somebody explain to us whose kid is this? Huh? Can the father of this child come and scoop up your son before he hugs the wrong person? Ha <laughs> ha. Ah. Oh, he, he just hugged Henry, talking about dad. Henry, sweetheart, how's Bertie? Is there something you're not telling us? Who? Oh, who is this kid? Who is this kid? It was like, oh, this is McKenna's nephew. <laughs> this is McKenna's nephew, you guys. This is McKenna's nephew. Say it with me. This is McKenna's nephew. There is no side babies for Henry. Okay. I think his name is Sin. Oh, look at Sin. The baby's name is actually Sebastian. And he tends to have a tendency to call everybody dead. If you are a male and you are within his eye radius, you are dead. Okay, kiddo. But McKenna's like, hey, don't go making me a single father, kid. All right. But everybody's having a good time laughing with the kid. Navio starts to think. She's like, Henry said that even if I'm infertile, the monostone bed will help me bear a child. Sylvia, she desperately wanted a child. I wonder if Henry feels the same way. Those are important conversations y'all should have beforehand. I'm just saying, no, I'm like, do, do. I mean, I'm guessing he probably do because he is an emperor and they tend to want an heir. But y'all should have this conversation before you go all over his body, Navier. And look, Henry is going to make a great father because I do believe that Navier is not infertile, okay? I have a whole theory on that. And if you guys want to hear about it, let me know in the comments. But I don't think she's the problem. I really don't. So be sure, yeah, I'm talking about you might be the problem. I think he might have been infertile from the get-go, okay? I don't think the cookies really cause infertility like they said. I really don't. It might have been infertility cookies, but I don't think it's what caused the infertility. I think Sylvia Shewish was born infertile to begin with. Maybe because his mama has been going around poisoning other women with those cookies. I'm just saying no. But while Napier is worried about her family, her husband, you know, their future, Rashta's over here meeting up with the assassin. And based on the conversation, she had the assassin kidnap somebody and sold that person into slavery. Like, why would you do that, Rasha? You came from slavery yourself. Like, this is why I be saying that she is just so crooked. Just the trashiest of them all. Oh, you're probably wondering, who would she have kidnapped and turned into a safe? None other than her firstborn's aunt, Liberty. What shall I say to Liberty when I see her? Maybe I'll ask her how she likes being one of the lowly slaves she's so despised. <laughs> so instead of you working to create laws and rules that are free people from having to enter slavery so that way nobody has to deal with the BS that you went through, Rasta, you want to go ahead and pass the, the pain on somebody else. Even though, yes, Liberty may have been a B-I-T-C-H to you. That's no reason for you to put somebody in that type of situation. And she's doing it just so she can see her burst into tears or curse at her. Like, girl. And that was the night that Rashta has. So now it's morning. Ooh, sunshine. You would think with the sun shining, vitamin D pouring from the sky... That Rashta will be over here doing something productive. No, she's listening to gossip. There are people, nobles talking. They're like, the trophy family has been loyal to the imperial family for generations. But who knows if they'll pledge to save for the next emperor. <laughs> One can't expect them to have a good relationship under the circumstance. I can't, they? <laughs> and Rashta... Not knowing how to mind her own business. It's all up in those ladies' business and she feels some type of way as always. Girl, you better leave the Chobi family alone. But of course, Rosh is not going to do that. She's going to go ahead and poke a bear and start some ish that she can't handle. She's out here asking 
Duke argued to borrow 10,000 credits. I'm just going to go ahead and convert that into USD and say that she's asking to borrow 10,000 USD. Like, wow. So I'm, like, I'm sorry I keep coming to you like this. And Duke argues like, it's all right. I know you'll pay me back. While he's writing a check for her, she has this dazed look in her eyes. And he's like, huh, why are you staring at me like that? And she's like, I, oh, I was thinking how beautiful you are, like the demon in myths. Girl, you don't know how true that is. Ha, <laughs> you are looking at a demon, a beautiful demon. In the words of Beyonce, he is a beautiful nightmare. He could be a sweet dream. Oh, a beautiful nightmare. Either way, Duke Erg is playing you. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Enough of Beyonce. So Duke Erg is like, anyway, that's a lot of money. What are you using it for? Or is it a secret? And she's like, well... <laughs> and here is what she's planning on doing. She is planning on using that money to attempt to destroy and hurt Navia's parents. Like why? Navia's in her empire, minding her business, worrying about building a future with her husband and trash years, okay, is over here not minding her business, attacking and hurting people who has absolutely nothing to do with it. The trophies are enjoying their life, enjoying it. And here she comes just banging out the place with her negativity and her evil plots, her evil plots, which always fail because they dumb like she is. Like, girl, why don't you just enjoy being pregnant? Huh? Like. So that wraps up this chapter, folks. I'm concluding the video right here. Stay tuned for the thrilling developments in the next episode. And don't forget to show your support with a like and subscribe, fueling my motivation to bring you even more captivating comic chapters in the future. Until next time, happy reading.